What is up y'all? I'm Majamin Outdoors and this is my channel. Sorry guys, I haven't been posting much. Uh, the past few months have been absolutely crazy. So I've had a lot of issues. Y'all saw the issue with my truck. Uh, I had eye surgery, so this one is, this one's actually good now. But I'm actually getting this eye done today. Uh, it's the Friday before I'm gonna post this video. So hopefully by Monday, then when I post this, my eye will be good. But I've been doing some welding projects this week before I get my surgery, because I can't, I can't do it right after surgery. So I got, I'm trying to get some stuff done today and the past few days. And one thing in particular, it ruffled a lot of feathers. I posted on my TikTok and oh my gosh, people are, people are so pissed. It's hilarious, but it's a trailer hitch for my bike. So this is so I can haul a really small trailer like my Jigster 1000 frame down to get powder coated by Reese Bowers, this guy, um, built from the bottom. He's got a really good powder coater. If y'all haven't seen Reese's Jeep build, his, his most current one, man, it is mint. This thing is sweet. I'm excited to get the guy to do this bike. Anyway, let's get into the video. I'm gonna go buy the trailer right now, and then I'm gonna show y'all uh, me building the trailer hitch and putting the tires on. So we're here at Northern Tools in North Lakeland. Uh, it's basically a Northern Harbor Freight, I guess. But I actually found the exact same trailer in black. So Harbor Freight has the same one. It's $10 more and it's red. And red wouldn't go very well with the bike that I'm putting it on. So anyway, black's gonna be sweet. So I'm excited to get this one from here. It's $289, not bad. So let's go do it. Yeah. Hitches. There we go. See? 40 by 48 inch, 289. I could have definitely carried this on a bike. Oh, this actually would have been really heavy. I probably should have bought a cart or something. This thing's pretty heavy. This is a little bit better. And they actually sell name brand stuff too, so I guess it's not just like a Harbor Freight. They sell like Harbor Freight stuff too, but also name brand like Hondas and stuff. There we go, that's better. All right, so I got it. About to take, oh! oh no. So I was walking out, didn't even realize this was supposed to be one of two. So I walked out with the lower box and this one's the axles, I guess. I completely walked out with that. Plus, I got some blasting media, but there's no way I would have carried this stuff on the bike, so I'm thankful I brought my truck. So I got the trailer and I'm headed home. Hopefully, the truck does not break down on the way home because that would really suck. So, But I know now that I could not have picked that up on my bike. It was just too much stuff, too heavy, so you know, I'm glad I bought the truck.
So I'm gonna take the flap disc and actually try to remove some of this nasty road rash. See if I can polish it up and just spray it black again to make it look decent for a very little amount of time. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of black to cover it up. You got the tires mounted? So I'm using my DeWalt right now and I'm actually cutting this angle iron. I'm actually gonna be building something really interesting today. So y'all stay tuned. So this piece right here is actually gonna be clamped around the swing arm. So I didn't have an actual C. I just only had an angle iron. And so I cut this from over here, moved it right here, and I actually beveled the edges so I can actually get good penetration and make a good weld. Because if not, if you just welded these two unbeveled edges together and tried to grind it flush, it wouldn't be very good weld. It'd be weak. Unless you had really, really good penetration, but still, if you grind it flush, it's not going to be very strong. So with the beveled edge and good penetration, this is going to be a really, really strong weld. It's going to need to be a really strong weld because uh, this is going to be clamped onto the swing arm, and the mounting brackets going to be sticking out like right there. And around and so once the trailer's put on it's going to put pressure on it uh can't have much tongue weight gonna have to make sure i load the trailer properly but uh this will be pulling up on this piece even if you do it like this it's still going to be pulling up on it regardless one of these sides is going to have to be welded well, this is going to be interesting so let's do it going to clean the stuff off with acetone so welds really really clean i hope It's not the best tax, but we'll make it work. Yeah, that's a nice, beautiful weld. I did one root pass in the bottom of the bevel, and then I did a top weave, sort of. And then I did the backside as well. So that should be a really, really strong bracket. So I'm doing like a single-sided hitch. Uh, it should look really good when I'm done. So I actually beveled the edge of this one inch right here. I'm coming off at an angle, and they kind of coming right back. Instead of just kind of welding it directly up on it, it would look kind of ugly. So this way it should look better. It's gonna come off like that. It kind of come back and back around. And then I'm gonna do one from underneath and kind of make it a support. Almost sort of like the single sided swing arms, uh, the tubular ones. Beautiful. Very concave uh, because I was a bevel in there. And so now I'm going to lay a bead on top after I do the bottom. See how beautiful that is? Clean metal really helps.
I'm gonna run back over that once I uh, get the, everything back together. Now I'm gonna chop off here, make a 90, and put the ball on. So I got the pass number one. This is pass number two. So I'm gonna just put pass number two on both these, all these connectors. Try to make it complete like these. So the welds look pretty good, honestly. That's a nice little weave. The starts and finishes were not that great, but um, you know, cause I can't, I'm not good at curving around the whole thing and, and keeping it consistent weaving and stuff, so. But it's still really good welding, so I gotta do. These are still receded pretty good bit. They're pretty still concave. So when I get done with a third pass, I'm going to hit it with a flapper disc and try to make this look like one entire piece, even though it's kind of got a, a sharp angles. Just look as, just make it look as curved as possible, so. So I'm going to take those beautiful weaves and turn it into something like that. Because you can't tell there was a joint there. Well, for the most part at least. It's not going to be a welded joint. At least it won't look like it. So I did it to each joint before I welded this lower section on. And all I got to do is just sand to make those look a little bit better. So I'm working on getting the mounting bracket on here. I kind of should have done that in the first place. So I'm actually going to take this round stock and dremel out a spot where I can fit this piece of pipe in there and then I'm gonna do pipe right here. I actually went to Lowe's and got some square U-bolts. So these are perfect. So I kind of angled that one like that. Uh, mainly because if I angle it like that, I can get closer to these nuts. If I go straight down, I can't. But obviously if you got an angle, you can kind of get around the sprocket like that. If you go like that, the furthest point forward is directly in the center where the sprocket is. So if you do an angle like this, you won't hit it like that. So if I do it like that, and so that's what I'm gonna do right there. Uh, I got this point, the U-bolt goes through those, we'll clamp, and then this one will go like this and clamp. And so there'll be four nuts holding these on, two U-bolts, uh, and then I'm probably gonna do another brace up here, down to this swing arm. So uh, probably do another brace to this part of the swing arm, just to do the like downward force. So the whole, will, the whole thing will be pushing down and torquing up on this, on the bottom, basically in the back. So it'll be torquing up on this, down on this. And so if I can relieve some of this pressure with this smaller piece, maybe with one rod, uh, I think that'll be better and less stress on this main support. I'm just trying to take as much weight off of uh, really anything, have, have as many supports as possible. But I just want to have the one-sided. I just want to have the one side. I don't want to have a, a double-sided hitch, which is more realistic, safer. But I just like the look of the single-sided, so I'm just trying to make it work because I don't have a single-sided bike. So the single-sided hitch will work fine. Hopefully I don't ruin this swing arm with doing this project. So I got the U-bolts uh, partially in there. And here's the back plate. This is going to be what the U-bolts push against the swing arm to actually clamp it down. And I'm trying to put this angle iron it so it sits in between here. So I'm just going to put it in there, try to weld some braces on it for these uh, to kind of like, you know, sit in. And kind of just give it this plate a more rigid. Uh, and then once I get all this done, I'm going to get it on the swing arm where exactly I want it. I took a small pipe, cut it in half. I'm about to weld this on the channels for the U-bolts. And I'm going to do the other one right here. So basically they sit in there and basically hold the back plate in its spot. So 
So I actually had to recut and bend some sheet metal because I tried bending both of these and neither worked. So I had to rebend that uh, and make it actually taller. So let's get the pipe welded on. About to weld onto here, up, and then down. Totally dope. Got the diamond shape. So I did a few things. I actually took that nut, welded it even more to taper out around it, and then I rounded off the edges a little bit. Um, they're not the most beautiful. There's a little bit of undercut, but I added a top brace, and I ran another weave on top. It's gonna go like that. Bolts up to the top, and back around. I might readjust um, this. You know, all I have to do is cut this off and re-weld some stuff if I don't like it, if it doesn't work. So we'll see with, we'll go with that, see if that works. All right, so I got the upper brace bracket on and I got everything welded up pretty much. I might need to go over stuff a few more times, but like I showed y'all, I tapered this out. It looks pretty good. This is basically done. And now I'm just going to assemble the trailer so I can test everything out. So my battery overheated a few times, so I didn't get the entire assembly of the trailer on camera, but Here's the trailer. All I have to do is just put some wiring on it. I actually got the taillights on, but I got to wire it up. But it's not really a big deal because I don't even have a wiring to my bike yet. I got a, a trailer wiring kit and I'm going to splice it into the back of here into the taillight. And then I'm run it down the swing arm to the trailer. And I still need to do something for the chains. Uh, I might just do a small hook right here, just hook to... Or something, I'm, or I'm not sure if I'm going to go all the way to the actual swing arm just in case the whole entire thing detaches. But for right now, this is good enough just to test it and see how it performs. I mean, the trailer itself is kind of weak, but I mean, like I'm 160 pounds and I'm bouncing it up and down. Now it flexes a little bit, the actual mount itself. See, the, the mount actually flexes a little bit. But in, in re all reality, that's probably fine because it, it is strong. I had somebody that's 250 pounds jumping up and down on it, and it still flexed, but it, nothing happened. So I'm thinking that it'll be perfectly fine. This trailer is actually really, really light when it's all said and done. The bike is not pulling much weight horizontally uh, with nothing on it. And even with the Jixer 1000 frame, like I'm taking this frame... Swing arm, all that stuff, wheels to get powder coated in Fort Myers by Built From The Bottoms Powder Coater. He's really, really good. He's the one that did the Jeep, and so I'm super excited to get this guy to do this work. Anyway, that's not going to be much weight on this thing, so it won't be much tongue weight. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Anyway, uh, I just, all i got to do is install the wiring, put a deck on it, and then I can really, really test it out.
honestly, it works pretty well. I don't really feel it behind me too much. Even with a full-size dirt bike on it, about 300 pounds, I don't feel the weight much. Stops pretty good, even with just one caliber. I'm happy. Sorry guys, I didn't get much footage of this thing actually being tested. That's just because I was running out of time. I will post GoPro videos and a bunch of videos on the road with this thing. I'm hoping to take two of these bikes, preferably the lesser expensive ones, and actually test them on this thing. To basically torture test the heck out of this hitch. Because I want to make sure it can handle one bike in the most extreme conditions. And if it can handle two bikes, then it can obviously handle one. So anyway, I'll talk to y'all next time. I'll see y'all later. Y'all take it easy.